Let's open our Bibles tonight to the book of 2 Timothy. You know, we've been ministering the last couple of services dealing with the power of God. And, and, and actually, when I talk about the power of God, I'm not trying to divide God's power from God because God is power. We need to understand God is power. All things were created by him. Without him was nothing made that was made. God commanded, and it says, he commanded and everything came into existence. And at the very beginning, God had a plan and a purpose and a mission. And his plan, his purpose, and his mission was to create those who would be just like him that could, throughout eternity, rule and reign over all of his creation. Did you know that? The Bible says that we will be sitting upon the throne with God. I don't exactly understand it, but I'm going to enjoy it. He, he, he's the king of kings and the Lord of lords. So those who are born again, who washed in the blood, who have uh, embraced Christ in this life will rule a, and reign as kings throughout eternity, throughout kings. I was talking this morning how we need to start operating in our kingship. We need to begin to move in that authority and that power to what? To set people free. Uh, we don't wrestle flesh and blood, but against principalities, powers, rulers of darkness. We're dealing with demonic powers. The problems you've been having in your life are from demonic sources. Now, people would have you to think, well, if I'm having demonic powers then uh, coming against me, that means they've got to be cast out of me. That, that doesn't mean they're in you. It means they're coming against you. And uh, you've got to take authority over it. You've got to rise up in the name of Jesus. And uh, there's different levels of authority and power. We, we know that if you know anything about electricity, there's 120 volts running these lights, but we got 240 volts. Uh, we got 400 amps coming into this building. I know that Brother Donnie, he was an electrician and in, in, in working for the government, and, and uh, right? Weren't you? Okay. And so I know a little bit about electricity. I was an electrician in the Navy, but I know just enough to be dangerous. Well, I think there's a lot of people when it comes to the power of God, they know just enough to be dangerous. But we, we, in order to overcome a supernatural enemy, we need supernatural weapons. We need the power of God. Absolutely, we need to have the power of God. When I say the power of God, I'm talking about, it says, you know, of Jesus of Nazareth, how God anointed him with the Holy Ghost and, and, and power. Jesus was anointed with the Holy Ghost and power. And he went about doing good and healing all who were oppressed of the devil. Uh, back about four years ago when Pastor Pete and I went up to uh, York Hospital and laid our hands on Jason, right? His name was Jason, who had been uh, dragged underneath the car over 200 feet. He was riding his bike and a girl was on a, uh, he, the, Jason is in his 30s, and uh, he, he dragged under the car uh, 200 feet on the asphalt. I mean, it, it scraped his, his, I mean, when the, he died. And they got there, the paramedics there, and they, they, they shocked him back to life. But they told the mother, Patty, they said, he's gone. He's in this body, but he's gone, his brain. Uh, we've, done, we've done the, the, the x-rays. We've done the uh, whatever they do, the scanning. His, his brain is gone. So she calls me up. Now, when, when, when I talk about moving in the power of God, I'm talking about moving in the spirit. I'm talking about walking in the spirit, I'm talk, which is actually walking in faith or walking by faith, moving by faith. And, and faith always agrees with God. Say faith always agrees with God. Faith never calls things that are as they are. Faith, we having the same spirit of faith according as it is written, they believe, therefore they spoke, we also believe and therefore speak. Faith always calls those things which be not as though they were. It always says what God says from the heart. Now, you got to begin somewhere, right? So you got to begin in your head. Verbally, when I got born again, I didn't understand the Bible, but this is what I said as a 19-year-old kid on my 19th birthday. I said to the Lord, I said, whatever this book says, I'm going to believe. It, it had to be God moving me in that way. No one ever taught me that. I just went in that way. I said, whatever this book says, I'm going to believe. And I began to believe it. But as I began to hide the word of God in my heart, then all of a sudden it, it, it got into my heart and, and I began to walk in this life called faith. Um, it, it's, it's called the mystery of faith. Uh, we're talking about, see, it's, the world does, doesn't understand this. God, God, 
upholds all things by the word of his power. He, he, he keeps everything together by the word of his power. How, how do we as believer, believers keep everything together in our life? You know, because the enemy is coming against us. The flesh is coming against us. Uh, our worst enemy is ourselves. a lot of times. People are coming against us, circumstances. How are we going to hold it all together, uh, brothers and sisters? By the word of God. We hold it together by the word of God. Now, before I had the word of God in my heart, I mean, I wasn't holding it together. I was a total, complete mess. And let me tell you something. If I ever let go of the word of God, I'll become a complete and total mess. No ifs, ands, or buts. But it's the word of God that keeps it all together for us. And the more of the word of God you have in your heart, and the more of the word of God you believe, you receive, the, the, the more you'll get it together. But Jesus had the spirit without measure. I mean, he, 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 he had the, un, the unlimited ability, power, dominion, authority of God at his hands. And he, he only used it as his father directed him. See, and this is one thing about moving in the spirit. Because I know people are teaching you that, well, just go to the street. And everybody you see that's sick and everybody that's diseased, everybody afflicted, just go ahead and lay hands on them. Now, now I'm, not, I'm not saying that you won't have some success in that. But really, do you know what, how, it, how it really works? You may not know this. But there's been many times when I'm out on the highways and the byways. And, the, and, and I would end up ministering to people. But I was being led by the spirit. You get so full of the spirit, it says the steps of the good man are ordered of the Lord. But if you're teaching people just everybody you see that is sick, go lay hands on them. You're not being led of the spirit. You can get yourself in big trouble. It, because I, here's an example. We, we used to have a school teacher here and we had a Christian school. And she was a really wonderful lady. And one day, and, and, and I'm teaching on the authority, the power, who we are in Christ. And one day, you know, she remembered what Pastor Mike was teaching, but she forgot the part where I said, you got to really hear from God. She's walking down the road, and she sees three guys working on the pickup truck. This really happened. Saw three guys working on a pickup truck. She walks over there with the authority of Christ and says, what's wrong, guys? And they looked at her like she was, lost her mind. Now, I'd have been wondering if she if she'd really been hearing from God, but she wasn't. How many of you know that you can be in the flesh by trying to obey God? Yeah. Yeah. Have you ever done it? Oh, yeah. I've done it. Yeah. So she goes over there and she says, what's wrong? Guys, they said, well, <clears throat> exactly why should we be telling you? She said, well, I can help you. They said, you can help us. What's wrong? Well, it won't start. She said, I'll take care of that. Really happened. Precious woman, too. Very. If I told her, told you who it was, I won't tell you, but she was a wonderful lady. She went over there and laid her hands on that engine. She said, I command you to run in the name of Jesus. Well, she backed away. She said, okay, go for it. Now, they went to turn the key. Nothing happened. Turn it again. Nothing happened. Three, four times. She said, okay, hold on. She did it again. Walked away. She said, okay, now tell, tell it to do it. And nothing happened. You know what they did? They ended up cursing her out. She walked down the road like a dog with his tail between his legs. You know why? Because the Holy Spirit didn't tell her to do that. Hello? Jesus only did what the Father told him to do. Well, what if the engine would have started? Then it's proof that she heard from God. Because how many know God can't fail? I know another precious lady who went home to be with the Lord years ago because I used to minister for her. She was a minister up in, 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 in uh, Huntington, Pennsylvania. And uh, one of the precious people that came to her, her, her ministry uh, ended up in the hospital. Uh, some major problems. Well, that lady died. So that precious woman went into the hospital room, huffing and puffing authority, dominion, I've got the power. She goes into the hospital room in front of everybody, and she was a big lady. She jumped up on that hospital bed and commanded that woman to come back to life. Guess what happened? She didn't come back to life. Told her again, come back. Nothing happened. Went on and on and finally just ran out of, uh, out of breath and she got off of the hospital and it hit that community and it did a lot of damage. You know why? The Holy Ghost didn't tell her to do it. Y'all still with me? Jesus only did what the Father told him to do. So Patty calls me up and I hear the Lord in my heart. I hear him say, don't go now. It's like a Friday. Don't go now. Go on Monday. 
and I will raise her up in three days. I heard the Lord say that. And, and well, how do we know you heard the Lord say that? Because he did it. Now, if he wouldn't have done it, then I, I didn't hear the Lord. And, and so uh, uh, I heard the Lord say, take Pete with you. He's going to go with you. Now, I didn't call Pete up and say, hey, Pete, I heard God tell me to tell you that you got to go with me to such and such a place. Watch out for people who do that stuff to you. They may not know it, but they're operating in manipulation. I didn't tell Pete. Did Pete? I didn't call you up and say, Pete, God told me you got to go with me. Did I tell you that? Didn't tell you that. But I knew in my heart he was going. So I called up Pete and I said, hey, Pete, I sure would love to have you come with me. I'm going to go up and pray for Jason up in the, uh, 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 the, the, the uh, hospital up there in, um, in York, Pennsylvania. And so he said, Pastor Mike, I'm so sorry. I can't go with you. I've got to go to work today. I said, oh, that's okay, Pete. Why? Because I have nothing to prove. <laughs> See, when you're walking in the spirit and you're just looking to God and you trust in God and you believe in God, you just give it to God. And so, uh, but right before I left, he called me up and he said, hey, I, I can go with you, uh, Pastor Mike. I said, wonderful. I didn't say, yes, I knew you would. <laughs> no, I just, I said, okay, wonderful. And so he came with me and we're going up there. And I said, now, pr Brother Pete, because he was still pretty young in this stuff. And I, uh, about four years ago, now three years ago, I said, Pete, I said, now, I just want to encourage you. I said, we're going to go lay hands on Jason. And I said, don't be moved if you don't see anything happen. Don't be moved by that because it's going to be okay. He's looked at me and said something along that line. Really? I, I guess we should have ha recorded that con conversation, Pete. He said, really? I said, yeah, it's going to be okay. Am I exaggerating at all, Pastor Pete? Well, that, the, the conversation happened the day before. Oh, it happened the day before. I told you the day before. Don't be moved. Okay. Right, so we get up there. We go up the elevator. Patty meets us with her sister crying, weeping. I understand, don't demean it. We didn't talk faith. Believe she's okay. No, we're just going to work with you. So we got in there and we simply laid hands upon Jason. Just prayed a simple prayer, told his brain to come back, told him to be normal in the name of Jesus. And then, you know, and hug mom and she's still crying and, and sister is still crying. And, and, and we just walked out and went down to the car and, and we sat and, and, and Pete kind of said, I thought I would see something to happen, right? You said that. I thought something would happen. I said, no, Pete, it's okay. It's okay. Well, we didn't hear nothing. I didn't hear anything, but I knew that I knew that. How many know that's what faith is? Faith is when you know that you know. Now, the doctors told them that her, his brain was, it was mush. I mean, 200 feet on the asphalt under a car when the girl ran her over, him over on his bicycle. 200 feet. Well, you know what? Three days later, Patty called me up and she's crying with joy. Pastor Mike, the moment you walked out, he began to move, he began to function, and they went in and examined him and he's completely normal. His brain is completely restored. Well, what I want to talk about tonight for just a little bit is the fact that we need to understand. I know we need to know who we are in Christ, but let's talk about what are we in Christ? What are we? What am I in Christ? Okay, I know who I am in Christ, but really what we are in Christ, we are a vessel. That's what we are. Did you know that you're a vessel? In this society, we go, oh, I'm a carpenter, I'm an electrician, I'm a plumber, I, I, I'm a housewife, I'm this, I'm that, you know, I'm, I'm a railroad conductor, you know, whatever it is. What you understand, the very first thing you need to understand as God's people is you are a vessel. Say, I am a vessel. I am a vessel. Let me just read some, and you can look there in, in 2 Timothy chapter 2, because we're going to take a look here down uh, in, in verse uh, 18. In just a moment. But let me read this to you. In 2 Corinthians 4, 5. For we preach not ourselves, but Christ Jesus, the Lord, and ourselves your servants for Jesus' sake. For God, who commanded the light to shine out of darkness, has shined in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. What, what does that mean, the glory of of God in the face of Jesus Christ. That means when you look at Jesus, you see the glory of God, manifested presence. The light of the glory. God who commands the light to shine out of darkness has shined in our hearts. 
God has shined in your hearts for what purpose? That you might understand that the glory of God is revealed to us in Jesus Christ. That's the glory of God. Jesus said, if you've seen me, you've seen the Father. That's the glory of God. Jesus is the express image of the Father in the earth. And then it says here, but we have this treasure in earthen vessels, because this is way after the resurrection written to the Corinthian church. So now we have this Jesus in us. Say, Jesus in me. Now, now do you really believe that? Yeah, pastor, I believe Jesus lives in me. No, no, do you really believe that? Do you really, really believe that Jesus lives in you? Not only do we have Jesus living in us, but we have the Holy Ghost in us. And we've been endued with power from on high. Now, the, the Holy Ghost, when he came, he did not bring to everybody a different level of his power and his ability. Now, I know the gifts are given severally as the Holy Ghost wills. I understand that. But did you know that all the power of, of, of God came with Jesus inside of you? All of it. All the power of the Holy Ghost, when he came inside of you, came with him. It's all, it's all, he's got it all. Say, he's got it all. And if he has it all, then I have it all. All the power of God, it's yours. Your heirs and joint heirs. Now, Pastor Mike, you can't say I have all the power of God. Well, let me, let me, t because you're, you need to understand that this power is going to flow out of this vessel to the degree that this vessel is ready for the power to flow. The vessel that has the glory of God in it, because we have, we have this treasure in earthen vessels, why? That the excellency of the power may be of God and not of us. Well, what do you mean, Pastor? It's not of us. It's not. It comes from heaven into the pot. And it flows out of the pot. It comes into us. We're a vessel. Say, I'm a vessel. That, see, that's what you were created for. You were created to be the tabernacle, the house of God. 1 Corinthians 2, 9. But as it is written, I have not seen nor ear heard, neither into the heart of man, those things which God has prepared for them that love him, that love him. So this is, this is where the rubber really meets the road. Because I'm telling you, faith that worketh by love. That when the love of God is manifested in you and you're moving in the love of God. And I, I'm going to talk about, because we talk about power tonight. And, and I just want to kind of give you, just give you the tip of the iceberg, what we're talking about. Did you know that the love of God is powerful? God's love is powerful. It's powerful. God is love. Now we know that God is a consuming fire, don't we? God is a consuming fire. Can I get some heads saying yes here? Yeah. God is a consuming, God is love. And love, according to 1 Corinthians 13, when Paul wrote it, said love never fails. There is power in the love of God. Of course, God is love. So when I tell you these things, I'm not trying to take the attributes or the virtues or the characteristics of God and trying to dissect them and set them apart. I'm just telling you that God is all-powerful and love. When you're walking in the love of God, it is powerful. Love is powerful. Love never fails. <laughs> I said, love never fails. You know, that's why I've told, when I've done a lot of marriage counseling, I just kind of basically gave up on it because I discovered that most men don't want to hear what I have to say. Because they think it's the woman that's the problem. <laughs> but the Bible tells the man, love your wives even as Christ loved the church. I think that was what the prophet was trying to reveal to us in the book of, ha was it Haggai? Well, who was it that married the prostitute? Hosea. Hosea was, he, God told him, I want you to marry a prostitute. And she ain't going to be faithful. 
but I'm going to show as an example that my love working through you is going to take that little lady and turn her around into a devoted, faithful woman. <laughs> love never fails. Come on, guys. You ought to be grabbing that. You mean I can really, really change my wife? Absolutely, you can change her. Just love her like Jesus loves the church. Amen. Powerful, ain't it? Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, thank you. It's powerful. Hey, I can't take no credit. It comes from heaven. Listen, I have not seen, ear, have not heard, neither into the heart of man those things which God has prepared for them that love him, but God hath revealed them unto us by his spirit. For the spirit searcheth all things, yea, the deep things of God. The deep, say the deep things of God. Now, in the Old Covenant, all of the types in the shadows were not just about Jesus. You understand that. When they built that tabernacle in the wilderness, and did you notice the tabernacle had vessels made of gold and silver and wood and earth, didn't they? And every one of those vessels had a specific job in the house of God. They all had a purpose, every one of them. And we can't get into them tonight, but when they took that temple and after they had made all the vessels according to the will of God, say according to the will of God, see those vessels were molded and shaped and carved according to the will of God, then the Bible says over nine times it talks about it in Exodus and 1 Kings, it says, and then the glory of the Lord came. When the vessels were dedicated, committed, they were carved, they were molded, they were shaped, they were conformed to the plan of God. Then, when they dedicated them to the Lord and the blood was shed from the animals, which is symbolic of Jesus, the glory of God would come to the tabernacle. Remember when Solomon dedicated the, 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 the temple in Jerusalem and the glory came and it says the priest could not stand because of the glory. The glory is God's manifested presence. Now, the glory of God can be different levels. Last Sunday night, a lot of us were smelling amazing fragrances, weren't we, Howard? I was. How many of you smelled wonderful fragrances last Sunday night? Nobody was spreading anything. I'm standing up here, and I'm telling you, Pastor Charles, it was like waves of that fragrance was hitting me. I'm standing here, and, 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 and really, Howard and I were getting drunk in the spirit by experiencing the waves of the fragrances of God. It was hitting me. I go, whoa, did you get that one? And, and Howard would say, yeah, I got that one. You know, you kind of remind me when I was in the world when I would do a, a, a toke of a, of a marijuana stick. I'd go, whoa, that was good. And the guy, I'd hand it to him. They'd say, yeah, that was good. But how I many you know that we've got a glory the world can't compare to? That was death, but this is life. And the glory of God would come. And in Exodus 29, 43, and there I will meet the children of Israel and that tabernacle shall be sanctified by my glory. Whew. Now, that's a deep statement. He said, I am going to sanctify my tabernacle. Did you know that you are the house of God? You are the tabernacle of God. You are the temple of God. You are the house of God. He said, I will dwell in them and walk in them, and, 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 and they will dwell and walk with me. Now, you are a vessel. And whatever you put in this vessel is up to you. And Jesus said, Father, sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is truth. And he said this, the glory. Now listen, Jesus said this, the glory, Father, in John 17. Father, the glory which thou hast given me, I have given them. Now and then you say, well, he's talking about the Holy Ghost. No, the Holy Ghost hadn't been given yet. The Holy Ghost wasn't given yet. He said, Father, the glory which thou gavest me, I have given them. Boom, his words. His words, he gave his disciples three and a half years, he gave them the truth. How, do you, how many of you know that the truth is powerful? Yes. I said the truth is powerful. Yes. See, I, I didn't have that power until I got born again. Of course, I was born of the incorruptible Word of the seed of life. I was not born of corruptible seed. I was born again by the power of God's word. You can't separate God and his love. God and love are one. Do you know God and his word is one? You can't separate them. 
God in his word is one. God in his love is one. God in his fire is one. It's all God. Say, it's all God. It's all God. And you know who God's chosen to give his power to? His bride. <laughs> He's given his power to his bride. Pastor, why are you laughing? It's so wonderful. Because we're his bride. How many remember the day, ladies, when you were getting ready to get married to that handsome, good-looking, understanding, loving, romantic man? Weren't you excited? Man, if you walked down that aisle just dreading it, you made a big mistake. But if you couldn't wait to get down to that, that get up to that groom who's waiting there for you, who loves you and needs you and wants you, and it was the happiest day of your life, right? <laughs> Come on, ladies, somebody's got to be excited. I didn't say it's now, I said it was. <laughs> it was the happiest day of your life. And you know, God want, he created us to become one with him that he could give us all that he is. All that he has and all that he'll ever be. Man, that's deep stuff. That's power. It's a power that delivers. It's a power that heals. It's a power that sets free. Truth. You will know the truth. You will know the truth. Now listen, we're not talking about a truth in your head. No, no, no. Not the word in your head. It's in your heart. The truth is in your heart. And you get the truth of who Christ is and what Christ has done and what Christ wants to do and who you are in him and what you have in him and what you can do in him. And you can't hardly stay in your chair. It's like you, you, you're just going to crawl out of your skin. Like, whoa, I am so blessed. How many know you're so blessed? I am so blessed. And the more revelation you get, the more blessed you are. How many have you ever read a scripture and you thought you squeezed every bit of life out of it? And all of a sudden you read it again and you go, whoa, it's like waves, isn't it? Like, whoa, waves. Now, I know you like that word. Now unto him that is, down to him that is able to do exceedingly abundantly. Above all that we can ask or think, according to the power that worketh in us, unto him be glory in the church throughout all ages, world without end. Amen. You know, God isn't really holding back any of his power, his authority. He isn't. He's looking. Matter of fact, it says in the old covenant, when the, when the prophet was talking uh, to king, and he said, and, and, and he told the king to, to do what he did, and, and the king only, I think it's the same situation, the king, he took a, an arrow and he struck the ground three times half-heartedly, and the prophet was so upset, and he said, you know what, if you would have just had a little bit of passion, if you would have just had a little bit of aggression, if you would have been just a little bit spiritually violent, you could have smash that arrow into the ground over and over and over and your enemy would have been defeated never to return but because you are half-hearted he said he's going to hang around for the rest of the rest of the history of Israel <laughs> he said the eyes of the Lord are running to and fro upon the face of this earth he's looking for those who hearts are perfect towards him that he might show himself strong on their behalf did you know that God wants to show himself strong on your behalf? Get excited. God's not a respecter of people. I know we got apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, and teachers, but you know what? We're supposed to just help you to step into the fullness. What do you think Ephesians 3 was all about? He's talking to the saints that you might know the height, the depth, the width, the length, the breadth of the love of Christ that you might be filled with. You might be filled. He's talking to the saints. He ain't talking to the apostles, the prophets, evangelists, pastors, teachers, that you might be filled with all the fullness. God. Who? Me, little old me, yeah, little old you. Well, why would he use someone foolish like me? Because he loves to use the foolish to confound the wise. Yeah. People said to me through the years, How come you think God uses you, Pastor Mike? I said, Because I'm a foolish man. <laughs> Without Christ, I ain't got a lick of brains. I have no good natural talent. 
so the glory of God comes. Revelation 15, 8, it says, And the temple was filled with smoke from the glory of God and from his power, and no man was able to enter into the temple to the seven plagues of the seven angels were fulfilled in heaven. The day will come when the glory is so full of the power and the glory of God that not even nobody can even go into the temple. God's power, God's glory. Different levels of the manifestation of the glory. It could be fragrances. Like right now. Can you all smell? Right To me, I, I smell wonderful fragrance. Do you smell? To me, it smells like caramel right now. Anybody else smell a fragrance? Do you, do you smell that? I smell it. Wow, it smells just like caramel. <laughs> Woo, Lord, I'm hungry. <laughs> You say, you're crazy. Oh, that's fine. I don't care if you think I'm crazy. So the day of Pentecost comes. And what does God want to do? He wants, he, he's been preparing these men. He's been preparing them to receive his power, hasn't he? Isn't that what he's been trying to do for three and a half years? Isn't that what he told them after he ascended to heaven before he did? He said, now you go wait in Jerusalem. He said, and the Holy Ghost will come and he will endure you with power from on high. He said, now, guys, the job that needs to get done, you can't do it. Listen, the job that we need to get done as God's people, as God's vessels, as God's houses, as God's tabernacles, as the, as, as the, the instruments of God, it ain't going to get done with your brain, with your singing ability. With, you know, I've heard of some really supernatural things. When the Holy Ghost begins to move in you, when, when people call it being filled with the Holy Ghost, when you're full of the Holy Spirit, because we're not always full of the Holy Ghost. How, how many of you know that's true? So I've got the Holy Ghost. Yeah, but you're not always full of the Holy Ghost. Sometimes you're full of something else. You're not always full of the Holy Ghost. Sometimes you're full of the cares of life. Sometimes you're full of fear. Sometimes you're full of worry or anxiety. Sometimes you're full of just daily things. But, 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 but when John was in the Spirit, he was full of the Spirit on the Lord's day. All of a sudden, he found himself in heaven. When you get into that place of being full of the Holy Ghost, you will find yourself going places and doing things that you could never imagine, never imagine, never dream, never dream of, that you have no ability to do. So uh, I know that in one of uh, John G. Lake's uh, 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 testimonies that there was a woman who could play the piano okay. She could play the piano okay, but she wasn't very good at it. But she would just go seek God. Now, she wasn't seeking God to play the piano. But one day she was just seeking God. She was seeking God and the Holy Ghost moved her to sit down at the piano. And there were some people in that congregation. She, she sat down on, at that piano and all of a sudden the Holy Ghost took her over and she began to play that piano like the greatest concert pianist anybody has ever heard. The people were in utter shock. They couldn't hardly believe it. And look at Sister So-and-so. And she's just playing under the power of the Holy Ghost. Did you know there's times when I was preaching, and yes, it's, it's a blend of Mike Yeager and the Holy Ghost. But there's been times when I was so swept up in the Holy Ghost, I don't even remember what I preached. I can't tell you too many times that happened, but there's been times I was just so full of the Spirit. I remember that time in Minneapolis, Minnesota. I know you've heard it before. I don't care. I'm going to tell you again. And I'm just seeking God. I'm just seeking the Lord. I'm just filling my heart with the Word. I'm not watching news. I'm not really even reading other people's books. I'm just going after God. I'm not really trying to get anything from God. I'm just going after God. And what I didn't realize is I'm being sanctified. I'm being purified. I'm being purged by the Word. The, by the washing of the water of the Word. It's flowing in me, flowing in me. Well, I'm preaching in Bill Aragoni's church, and he's got another church downtown. This is in the suburbs, and about 140 people are in the sanctuary, including children. I was kind of surprised. I knew I had to preach. I couldn't pray for people. I had to get out of there. So I get up there, and the context the Lord gave to me is in the year that King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord. I opened my mouth, and I quoted that scripture, and then I took off. I'm just gone in the spirit. I mean, I am gone like three sheets to the wind. How many ever been drunk in the natural? 
It wasn't you speaking, it was the alcohol talking, right? Well, it's the Spirit speaking through me. And so I'm just gone in the Spirit. But God made me aware of the time. I don't even remember what I said. All I could tell is that something was happening in the sanctuary. Something was taking place. I get done, and I know I got to get out now. Now, my wife is at the door, side door. My kids are in my pickup truck. And we had come up there with the fifth wheel trailer. We had a crew cab. I think it was a Dodge or a Chevy, a Chevy. And my wife is waving at me. Come on, honey. Come on, we got to get down to the other church. And so I didn't even make any closing remarks. I just ran out of the building, got into the truck, went down to that church. They were already doing worship. I stood up, and now a completely different sermon came out of me. I'm preaching about being on fire for God, being sold out lock, stock, and barrel, giving Jesus 110%. As I'm preaching this message, the power of God came in like a, like a wave of the ocean and then knocked them all out of their chairs, weeping and wailing and crying. Boom, they're all out. I had to stop preaching. <laughs> I had to stop preaching. It was just the Holy Ghost. Say, just the Holy Ghost. <laughs> just the Holy Ghost. And so the power of God comes flowing in. I, I can't preach no more. They're weeping. And it's not condemnation. It's conviction. And God's purging. God's cleansing. God's purifying. The fire had come. Well, Got out of there, and I had a cell phone in those days. It was a big bulky thing, you know, but next thing I know, I get a phone call from Bill Aragoni about 3 o'clock in the afternoon, and he's whispering to me. He's whispering, Brother Mike, Brother Mike. I said, yeah, Bill, because it was really strange. I said, yeah, what's up? Does that always happen when you preach? I said, Brother Bill, I have no idea what you're talking about. I wasn't there. He said, as you ran out the door, the power of God was so strong on me. He said, I melted to the floor. Brother Mike, I couldn't move. He was upset. I could not move or talk for two and a half hours. Brother Mike, I couldn't move. I couldn't move. I said, wow. I said, that's Jesus, ain't it? He said, no, you don't understand. He said, you, and he's telling me, you don't understand. He's all upset. I said, what do you mean? He said, well, you know, we had all of our women and our children and our newborns in the sanctuary. I said, yeah. He said, I thought they all had left. You could hear a pin drop. Brother Mike, I stood up, and they were all slayed, laid out under the power of God, and not even the newborns made a whimper. That's the power of God. That's what God wants in our lives. God wants us in the place where his glory is manifested, not, not just in our church services, but on the highways and the byways and the streets. Listen, the devil, he had, he, 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 he had no way to stop Jesus because Jesus was full of nothing but the power of the Father. Woo, I'm about lost in the Holy Ghost. <laughs> you're a pot, whether you know it or not. You're a pot. Tell somebody I'm a pot. <laughs> I'm a pot. And you can fill that pot full of whatever you want. And you can dump out of it whatever you want. And you can fill it with the word. You can fill it with the truth. You can fill it with life. You can fill it with joy. You can fill it with peace. Did you know every aspect of God is nothing but power? Do you know that the, fruit, the divine fruits of the Spirit, they're powerful. Love, joy, peace that passes under Jesus. He's in the ship. And it's sinking. I know what that's like. I was out there in the Bering Sea in the midst of a perfect storm on a 110-foot tugboat. And everybody's losing it. And I wasn't losing it. I didn't have no fear. I was born again on fire for God. But I mean, even the old salties, because that tugboat wasn't made to be in the rough seas uh, 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 like that. But a storm blew in. And I was out there in the midst of those storms at times on fishing boats. And the disciples who had been fishermen their whole life and their daddies were and their daddy daddies were. And they're losing it. They, they, it's Jesus is uh, sleeping. He's sleeping. And they wake him up full of fear. And they say, Lord, don't you care if we perish? But he's moving in the divine power of peace that passes all understanding. How, how, any of you ever experienced the glory of God's peace, the power of God's peace? 
I mean, when everybody else around you is losing it, man, you're just calm, cool, and collected. I mean, really, it's, I cannot explain it to you. The times that my life has been endangered, and I mean, I'm telling you, I'm on the edge of people killing me, and it's just like, it's okay. Story after story, it's okay. I mean, I remember I was a 21-year-old kid driving a motorcycle down the road in Wisconsin, getting ready to go back to Alaska. Everybody is going real slow. I'm not thinking. I'm in the spirit. Yeah, I'm not speeding, but I'm in the spirit. I'm talking to Jesus. I'm lost in the... How many know what I mean by lost in the Holy Ghost? Any of you ever get lost in the Holy Ghost? Go ahead and get lost in the Holy Ghost. Right now, go ahead. <laughs> so I'm lost in the Holy Ghost. Everybody's looking at me like I'm crazy, not realizing that the road is pure black ice. All of a sudden, my big, it was a 750 Honda Superbike, first Superbike they made, four-cylinder, heavy, heavy bike. It began to slip out from underneath me, and the minute I did, I never, my heart never speeded up. It never skipped a beat. It's just like, oh, the, bu the bike is slipping out from underneath me. I'm in the spirit. I'm going to... Oh, so what did you do, Pastor Mike? Everything went into slow motion. I am not exaggerating. I took my right foot, and I just simply lifted it up as it's, now remember, it's going boom. But to me, it's like, taking forever. I take my right foot, and I just pull it up. And as the bull, as, and I had crash bars front and back, and as the bike slams into the asphalt, I just simply got on top of it and rode it like a magic carpet ride. I'm on the top of this bike and it's, it is sliding down the highway. I'm passing people up. I'm sitting on top of this bike like, man, this is really wonderful. <laughs> people are staring at me as it's going past them. Ooh, it finally stopped. It had to be God because it's icy and that's a big bike. I got off the bike and picked it up like it was a feather. Shh, got back on it and took off. I'm in the spirit. I'm moving in the divine power of peace. The divine power of joy. The divine power of love. The divine power. Do you know there's a divine power of self-control? Of temperance? The divine power of holiness, the divine power of faithfulness, the divine power of long-suffering, where you can be in a situation that anybody else would almost lose their mind, but you're like, it's okay, God's with me. Can anybody relate with this? <laughs> as we close, 2 Timothy, oh, sure, pastor. No, no, as we close... <laughs> That was an inside joke. <laughs> Second Timothy chapter 2, verse 18. Who concerning the truth have erred, saying that the resurrection is past already and overthrow the faith of some. Nevertheless, the foundation of God standeth sure, having the seal, the Lord knoweth them that are his. And let everyone say, let everyone. Amen. Let everyone that nameth the name of Christ depart from iniquity, sin. What, what is that? It's you in the flesh. That's what it is. He's talking about you being in the flesh. And you get upset with your wife. You're in the flesh. When the guy passes you and almost, you know, bumps your front end and all of a sudden you decide to ride his bumper and beep your horn and shake your fist, you're in the flesh. How many know what I'm talking about? When, when you go home at night and you turn on your internet and all of a sudden there's some interesting things come up and you just begin to flesh out looking at YouTube videos. You're in the flesh. Hello? Y'all know what I'm talking about. Things that, see that's where the devil wants me. He, he, he don't want me in the spirit. He don't want me in the Holy Ghost. He don't want me moving in the power of God. He don't want me there. I ain't going to go through it tonight, but I came up with 45 realities of where the power of God abides. Love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance, holiness, self, uh, you know, just on and on, just, just, work, uh, just humility. You know, there's power in humility. You know, there's power in zipping the lip. There's power in the tongue. There's power in confession. All coming from God. 
We're powerful in Jesus. Hey, when we're, when we're in Jesus, we're like Cheerios, the unsinkable cereal. When I'm in jail, y'all know that I love Cheerios when I was a kid. Man, we're, well, I'm telling you, we cannot be defeated when we're, I told you this morning, have you ever had a time in your life where the scripture came to pass, behold, I give unto you power to tread upon snakes and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy and nothing, nothing, nothing shall by any means come to harm you? I've been there at times in my life. Oh, I didn't stay there, but I've been there at times where the devil tried to take me out over and over and over. And it could not harm me. The fire couldn't burn me. The knife couldn't stab me. The bullet couldn't pierce me. When I was in the spirit. You must think you're hot stuff, Pastor Mike. No, no, you don't get the one who lives in me is hot stuff. He's hot. The Holy Ghost is hot. <laughs> He's hot stuff. And the one who's hot stuff is in you. Yes, but you got to agree with him. You got you to be wrapped up and caught up in him. We'll close here. But in the great house are not only vessels of gold and of silver, but also of wood and of earth, and some to honor and some to dishonor. But if a man, therefore, if a man, therefore, will purge, listen, verse 21, if a man, therefore, will purge his wife, his mother-in-law, his, his, her husband. No, 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 no. You can't purge. You can't purge anybody. You can't even purge yourself without the word, without the truth, without the light of heaven. You can't do it. How many try to purge yourself without God? You know, the old monks, they did that. They would beat themselves. Uh, Martin Luther, he, he used to climb because he felt so unworthy. And he, he was aware of his sinfulness, which was okay. We, we need to be aware of what we are without Christ. But when we repent and believe on him, praise the Lord, now we're righteous. But he would climb up in the old monasteries on his knees until his knees were nothing but bloody just blood. That's all. They were scarred because he'd be climbing up trying to do penance, trying to do penance. And it didn't purify his soul. What's going to purify my soul, Pastor Mike, with the washing of the water of the word? But be transformed by the renewing of your mind. So I say this in love as we close. Listen, so we got precious saints. They, they, they know that demonic power has been after them and, and, and has, has a, a, a tormented them and attacked them and afflicted them. And, and, and then they hear about a famous deliverance ministry. And now they're going to go and, 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 and they're going to get delivered. And they get delivered and they get delivered and they get delivered and they get delivered and they get delivered. And they just get worse and worse and worse and worse. You know why? Because they never had a devil in them. They just simply needed to bring every thought captive to the obedience of Christ. <laughs> we have a precious sister here tonight that can testify to this. About three weeks ago, right around there, she came to me and said, Pastor Mike, I, I, I need deliverance. I, I knew she did. I, ne I need deliverance. God's already done a, such a wonderful work inside of me, but I need deliverance. I said, Sister, I said, you don't need deliverance. I said, you just need the truth. <laughs> I said, if you take the truth and take authority over your thoughts and over your mind, I said, you'll experience freedom. Yeah. And so it was about a week later, she came to our midweek service with the biggest smile I've ever seen her had. And she said, Pastor Mike, I'm free. <laughs> you know what made her free? The truth made her free. If a man therefore purge himself from these, he shall be a vessel unto honor. Meet for the master's use. Prepared unto every good work. Can you give the Lord a hand clap and a shout? Yeah. Woo! Free. 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 Whom the Son, we sang that song, right? Thank you, Lord. Free. Whom the Son sets free is? Free, free indeed. What's going to set you free? God made you to contain his presence, his, let, let's just use all these words. His presence, his glory, his grace, his power, his authority, vessel unto honor. God made you to carry about this glory in earthen vessels. 
Why? That the excellency of the glory may be of God and not of us. So when you're walking in this reality of the glory of God inside of you, God inside of you, wall to wall God inside of you, and you're not touching the glory because you know it's not you, but you know it's Jesus inside of you, because in him you live and you move and you have your being, and all of a sudden, you don't really feel it because people think, well, I just don't feel glorious. Well, can someone please show me what it means to feel glorious right now? It has nothing to do with feelings. <laughs> nothing to do with feelings. You might, you might, you might feel the worst you've ever felt, but you're in the spirit because you're trusting God, you're believing God, you're doing the will of God. You're, you know how many times the glory of God has hit me when I've been in the pulpit of the church because I wouldn't let sickness or some terrible physical thing I was going through keep me out of the pulpit. I would not let it. I would not let it. And I cannot tell you how many times I've been in the pulpit, nobody knew I was as sick as sick can be and as I'm preaching all of a sudden the glory of God would hit me and every symptom would be gone just like that boom like it never existed <laughs> like it never existed Woo, we're vessels made to be filled with his glory <laughs> 